Topic four, introduction to credibility. Let's read or go through the first paragraph, a framework of the credibility problem, right? Can be described as follows. Okay. We consider a block of insurance policies referred to as a risk group. Okay, a risk group. And this risk group is covered by an insurer over a period of time. Okay. So it's like this, right? You have a uh, block of insurance policies. We are going to refer to this block of insurance policies as a risk group. And this risk group is covered by an insurer over a period of time upon the payment of what? A premium. Makes perfect sense. The value of the premium is decided based on a rate specified in a manual, right? In a rate book. Okay. There is a, a rate book. And so this uh, the value of the premium is decided based on the rate specified in the manual. And we'll call it the manual rate. Okay. And on the specific risk characteristics of the group. So again, very quickly, the value of the premium uh, is based on uh, a rate that's given in the manual called the manual rate and on specific risk characteristics of uh, the group. So actually, right, and actually studies the recent claim experience of the risk group to decide whether a revised premium for the next period is required. Okay, uh, and actually studies the recent claim experience of the risk group to decide whether a revised premium for the next period is required. Basically, what it means is, uh, you know, if you've been given a very good risk, then maybe we give you a discount, and if you've been a poor risk, maybe we need to up your premium. Basically, that's what it means, right? Okay, so uh, what is the important thing here? We are looking at recent claim experience. So take note of that, yeah? Credibility theory uh, concerns the finding of the premium for the next period using the recent claim experience and the manual rate. Okay, so we're trying to combine, right? In credibility theory, uh, we're going to find this premium for the next period using the recent claim experience and the rate that we've been using from the rate book, the manual rate. Okay. Good enough for us, yeah? So, uh, let's read a few of these things. Uh, I've written here the problem. What is the problem? Say x, the random variable, representing the number of claims. That will be n, right? We use n for the number of claims or the frequency uh, of claims. Okay? Uh, x, the random variable, representing number of claims or claim size. We use x, right? Severity or aggregate claims, or aggregate claims. We use S, right? Yeah. So uh, we have X1, X2, right up to Xn. They are a random sample from the distribution of X. All good so far? We are saying this X can be either your, uh, uh, from your frequency model, uh, talking about the number of claims, or it could be, uh, you know, representing the claim size, or it could be representing the, aggregate claim. So uh, if you have a sample, a random sample of values x1 to xn uh, from the distribution of x, we have that based on this data from the sample, can we say something about x sub n plus one? No? We have this data, right? We have all this data. Now, can we do some prediction? That's basically it, right? Uh, based on this data, can we say something about the next value, xn plus one? All right, so now let's move on, right? This is just a build up to what we need. So I think it's good for us to know. Uh, not complicated, right? We're just saying, hey, look, we have a manual rate and then what we're going to do is we're going to give some value to the recent claim experience and then we arrive at our next premium or next uh, predicted uh, value of the number of claims or S or whatever. Okay, so now, right, let's move on. We have, in the context of actuarial science, we can think of xj, let me see here, j going from one, excuse me, j going from uh, one to n, 
as the experience of a certain policy holder in the jth time period, example, the jth year, right? First year, second year, up to the end year. And the insurer is interested in the mean of, okay? In the mean of X and plus one. Okay? The policy holder's experience in the next time period. So that's exactly what I just said, right? You have values up to Xn. We want to predict the next value, which is Xn plus one. It is reasonable that net of expenses, right? Net of expenses, let me just clear this. Okay. Net of expenses and profit loadings. This thing here, take note of the notation, right? This is psi. Yeah? Okay. Uh, how do you spell it? Yeah, psi. Or we don't like that, we can call it psi. Yeah? It's a Greek letter. By using psi to represent or that's the notation that is being used in the textbook for expected value of x. Okay. Okay. Um, are we going to say that psi equals to the expected value of x is equal to the expected value of x plus one, right? Uh, is the correct premium to charge for the policyholder in the next period? So let's watch this, yeah? Let's go through that again and make sure we know what we're talking about. Yeah? It is reasonable. So it is reasonable that um, it's reasonable that net of expenses and profit loading, so which means we have not included expenses and and profit uh, margins, psi, the expected value of x, we can take it as the expected value of x plus one. Okay, excuse me. Let me say it again. Yeah? Psi, which is the expected value of x, we can take it as equals to the expected value of x and plus one. Okay. Uh, is the correct premium to charge for the policy order in the next period. Unfortunately, the expectation is always, yeah, this expectation is almost always unknown in practice and the usual needs to decide on the value of psi, value of psi using past data. Okay, using past data, prior knowledge or a combination of both sources of information, which means past data and prior knowledge. Okay, um, I want to highlight something to you here first. So this part is easy enough. The idea of this part is easy enough. Uh, just take note, the mean of X, right, is what your textbook uses, psi, right? Okay, in place of the usual mu. Okay, that's the expected value of X. Yeah? Okay, so in a nutshell, what's happening is we have X1, X2 right up to Xn, which is your past data. Okay, this is your past data. And this is your prior info. So we'll combine your past data and your, okay? We'll combine, right? Your past data and your prior info um, uh, using credibility theory and, and, and come up with this thing, right? Okay, psi, expected value of x, the future premium, okay? So not difficult, right? Not difficult. Uh, I just wanted you to know what psi is. Uh, that's the notation they're using in the textbook, expected value of x. I also wanted you to know that uh, we have, uh, later on, we're going to combine uh, the manual rate and we're going to give some credibility to the recent experience and we come up with our premium. So that's basically the idea, right? So um, we're going to use uh, credibility theory to uh, do this, uh, this, these kinds of pricing. And uh, uh, what we will use, right? We will use uh, limited fluctuation credibility theory. Yeah? Limited fluctuation credibility theory, also known as classical credibility. Okay, we will use that. Uh, there are other techniques, uh, Bayesian techniques and all that, uh, Bullman techniques. We will learn uh, in ASTAM, okay, in the more advanced course. So, good, yeah? We're going to use classical credibility. And let's go through some of the minor, maybe some things that you have learned previously. This is a reminder of some basic ideas of statistics, yeah? Okay. 